The field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! Improbable scenes! It's where the dream begins to achieve the ultimate victory. The underdogs have prevailed once again! One cup open to all. There is a celebration in Orlando. Now, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. The field doesn't care if you're a pro or trying to be one. It only asks, how bad do you want it? It's unbelievable! The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Churchill Downs will be back to the Spires a month from now for the running of the Kentucky Derby. But tonight, just a few miles up the road, it's the first ever Kentucky Derby as Lexington SC meets Louisville City FC from Lynn Family Stadium. Alongside former German pro Devin Kerr, I'm Joe Malpa. Happy to have you with us tonight. After a half hour delay, lineups and kick, we're ready for you. We've got seven changes from Louisville City on the weekend, but for a team that didn't perform very well and is rotating, not surprising. You're still looking at one of the most talented teams in the USL Championship coming out of the Eastern Conference. For Sam Stockley and Lexington SC, inaugural year, they've got ambition. They certainly have depth within their squad. Now they're looking for their first victory and only the third time they've stepped onto a professional pitch this season. Louisville City FC last year made a run to the round of 16 in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, hoping to replicate that success here this year. Lexington, their first ever appearance in this tournament. Lexington from left to right in the white. Louisville from right to left in the purple. Nabil Ben Salah is the referee clad in red. Better late than never. A half an hour delayed by Mother Nature, but now underway in the second round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Both of these teams hoping this could be a get-right game of sorts. Lexington lost each of its first two games in their inaugural season in USL League One. Louisville City FC, after starting the season strong with a couple of wins, they have been outscored 8 to nothing in the last two games, losing to El Paso Locomotive and Sacramento Republic. Danny Cruz and crew hoping to build some confidence, regain that back again tonight. Here's Amadou Dia. Enoch Mushigalusa working end line, cutting it back as Dia for support. Diaz ball in. Out to Maris. Harris lost it, and Dia will let it run off the pitch. Here's our first look there about how slick the field might actually be. Ball got out in a hurry. Danny Cruz was quick to help and get it back in. Yeah, looking long for Del Piccolo. And Louisville has its first corner of the evening. Regardless opponent right now, Joe, they've still got to find a way to go out early, Louisville City, and start to set a tone for themselves that can mimic what we saw towards the tail end of the 2022 season that made it all the way to the USL Championship Final. You talked about their early resume in league play. Blue City have struggled, though, throughout all of their performances, wins or not. And for Lexington SC, this is very much going to be a Let's see what we can do. Sort of grab the bull and hang on if you can. There's no doubting their talent, but this is a tough ask on the road in a situation such as this in the Open Cup. Mayor is from the corner. Edge of the area, foul called against Perez. You'll notice Maris is wearing a soft cast on his right hand. He missed some time with a broken thumb for Louisville. We're very excited to bring him over this season from El Paso, and it was a bit of a false start. They got him out there briefly, lost him for a couple of weeks. Happy to have him again. With the departure of Corbin Bone, his retirement from professional soccer, they certainly had a void to fill. And even though there's young talent waiting in the wings for Louisville City, Elijah Winder, Carlos Mogul, to name a few, you needed someone that's got the veteran leadership and capability. His skill set, by the way, quite tremendous. I mean, 
in terms of off-season pickups. Got to be one of the bigger names in the USL Championship they went and got. Lucia Galusa squares it centrally. Maris looks back out to Lucia Galusa, but he wasn't ready for it. Danny Cruz talked about the differences between Dylan Maris and Corbin Bone occupying the same position in this lineup here for Louisville from last year to this year. But he said that Maris is somebody who can score a bit more, pick up assists a bit more in the final third, whereas Corbin was better in the build-up. Maris is better in the final product, and they think that'll lead to more goals this season. Yeah, the build itself is something that Corbin Bowen's starting deeper. You know, he was more so late runs coming into the box. It was Dylan Maris is going to spearhead that attack. He can move into the front three quite comfortably and even push into one of the front lines. That's not something that Corbin Bowen was regularly capable of. So definitely a different look for Louisville City, but it's adding layers to their attack, right? It's a similar argument in the sense for Lexington SC. The problem is, is they don't necessarily know what those layers are. Right? They're trying to find out an 11, and I was actually quite taken back on the comments in the good way from their manager, Sam Stockley. When you asked him about the best 11, he said, we're, we're not looking about the, our overall best 11. It's the 11 best for this game. Who do we match up the best against our next opponent? So for Louisville City, they've got speed in there, and they've got versatile players, guys like Tate Robertson at the outside mid spot, who can drop onto the back line, help defend. He can move into the midfield, play deep, and he's got attacking prowess that can move him into the final third to help out this front two. Tate Robertson was part of a cup set last year on Chattanooga FC of third division. Nisa went on the road and beat Memphis 901 on the USL Championship. Within that, Sam Stockby did mention that they hope and soon believe they will find a spine or a core of four or five guys who will consistently be a part of that 11. But they're not afraid to admit that they're not there yet. And they're experimenting here in the early going until it starts to click. So far in their first two matches in USL League One, a pair of 2-1 losses. You said he's happy with the performances overall, building on some of the things that they had some trouble with in the preseason. They haven't been issues so far in the regular season. And again, they think they're three or four games away from clicking in terms of the cohesion. The ball is skipping a bit here. Field still very slick, some head storms push through, hence our delay, and Mushigalusa gets wiped out. Free kick coming here. Oh, the boys in purple. Sam Stockley didn't agree with the decision in the tactical area, waving the referees off. Not sure that it's very difficult to argue, though. Remember, intent be just as much as the contact there. The tackle coming from behind. Yeah. Struggled a bit last game for Louisville. Danny Cruz challenged him on his performance after that game. Now ahead to Mushigalusa. Delivery to the back post. Nobody running backside. It'll come all the way through. Oh, it's saved at the end by Perez. Good hustle for Manny Perez. Gets by his man, squares it back. Nobody making that trailing run. Sean Tosh, veteran center back here for Louisville. Ramsey Kowazmi, the exact opposite in his first year for Louisville. Good to have that experienced player next to you, but Kowazmi still getting his feet wet. I don't mean because it poured before this game started, just a few games into his Louisville tenure. That's cute. <laughs> Always know I'm in for a good ride when you're making dad jokes seven minutes into the broadcast. <laughs> Appreciate you for warming everybody up. I'll be here all night, and that could be 120 if need be as well. Louisville needed 120 a couple of times last year on that run to the round of 16. Taken to penalties against St. Louis City 2. So a dogfight against Detroit City FC. Ultimately, they lost on a heartbreaking goal by Kenny Mukhtar of Nashville when Nashville came to Lynn Family Stadium. Washington, relatively new club here. Just their third game as a club. First, of course, an Open Cup. Sam Stockley spearheading things. 
last week was he mentioned actually his 14 month anniversary in the office. I don't know, we celebrated 14 month anniversary, so we kept it to a year, but he was excited to cross that mile marker. Didn't necessarily know that he was going to be the leading man. The gentleman on the sidelines to begin this project as the sporting director, which he was named, but as the process continued on, felt like that was the best direction for them to at least start with him on the sideline. Great footballing mind, Sam Stockley, or Stocks as we all have come to love and know him over the years. They've taken an interesting approach here, Lexington as well. Instead of funneling it from the top down, starting the pro club and then building out the academy, they took the inverse approach. They spent the better part of a year and a half building out the academy. It slipped through to Wilson Harris, now Mushigalusa. Enoch Mushigalusa was offside. Certainly close, which I want you to keep an eye on is actually the player at the top of the 18, not in the middle. Just underneath Wilson Harris right there. I'll tell you, that is really close. It's Frankie Martinez, left center back for Lexington SC that almost, almost keeps Musha Glus in an onside position. Mercury felt differently. Okay, Robertson pulls it back. Charlie Manchel taken down. Wave along by Nabil Bensala. I'll go back to your comments about Lexington and the way that they've sort of reverse engineered this project, right? It reminds me a little bit, and let's be clear, I'm very well aware that it's two different leagues and financials, but it reminds me a little bit of LAFC. Mm. They did the same thing. Their academy started a little bit earlier than the pro team, but found success right away, and you're starting to see some of that out of Lexington, but it's very impressive. When you're committed to a project, it's one thing when, okay, we're gonna write checks and we're gonna run our mouths in the media. We've certainly seen that before. But when you go out and truly start to implement that throughout the culture within the organization and then into the actual city, that's where you really start to take notice in something. And they take great pride in what this project is all about. So much so that, is the number 70%? 70%, three to four years' time, their ambition is that 70% of the players that are making appearances on the first team have come as local academy products. Wilson Harris barrels through. Ball's loose there for a second. Austin Causey bounces to it. Austin's father, Jeff, was the goalkeeper for DC United back in 1996 when they won the Open Cup MLS Cup double. Watch that spacing. Tariq Mohammed came a little bit high, so Frankie Martinez, a little slow to rotate out there. Can't blame him in that situation. That's just communication from behind. Turn from Ray Serrano out to Perez. Perez patient working in line. And a corner coming for Louisville. It's a 5-5 corner kick. Dylan Maris will venture out to take it. 31-year-old from Indiana. Coming off a career year for El Paso Locomotive and USL Championship as the rain begins to pour down again. At 10 goals, five assists last year for El Paso. Maris, nobody lingering at the penalty spot. Amadou Dia clips it to the backside. Tosh let it go. Maris won't keep it in for a goal kick. One of the other words tossed around by Lexington in that conversation about the academy and what they're doing in the community is legacy. Sam Stockley pointed out the ownership wants to leave that legacy in the area. They feel it's a hotbed for the sport. They've done things like build a local soccer park with seven state-of-the-art turf fields and continuing to build that out. They want to give young people in the area who love the game a chance to grow within it. anything else than a business venture. It's just a passion project for ownership and you love to see that kind of passion under that USL umbrella. Causey. They're going to have to find another avenue to explore here if they're going to see any sort of success moving forward. 
Kimball Jackson, Tariq Muhammad, two outside backs for Lexington coming really high when they're starting to possess out of the back. The problem is, is the front three from Lou City have all but eliminated any access for distribution from either the center backs or the goalkeeper into the midfield. So you're seeing a lot of balls come up over the top, trying to go win a 50-50. It's on your midfield. As Lules turn over the top, Mushigalusa has it, flag stayed down. Mushigalusa looking for Harris. They just haven't been in sync in the final third, Louisville, and that's something that could apply to the last week and a half for them, not just the first 14 minutes of this game. Tariq Muhammad brings it back for Frankie Martinez. Coming through the lines for Khalid Balagoon. Has one of the two goals of the season for Lexington. In both of their 2-1 losses. Don Smart on the bench has the other. And he has the historic tally as their first ever goal. Set history twice in that game, actually. Scored the club's first ever goal in the 25th minute. And then picked up the club's first ever red card in the 70th minute. Man after my own heart. <laughs> City FC, one of the most consistently successful clubs. The USL Championship just came off of a loss in the title game. Knocked down the Rebs in 2018. Made a round of 16 last year in this tournament. I'll tell you one better than that. I can't wait to hear the backlash that's about to happen on social media. That's the most historic club in USL Championship. You can't argue. It's that simple. You know, the only case that you might have in terms of the modern day era, which if you remember, that's a tackle on Madhu Dio. 2011 on, right? So that's when we hit the reset button for USL Championship in its current iteration. The early days of the Orlando Cities, but obviously that organization, oddly enough, Global City. <laughs> but funny how the, the ownership group changes that direction, but Every year since their inception, Eastern Conference finalists. Four times they've won the Eastern Conference, which means twice they've been runner-up and twice they've taken on the title. There's not a single club in the entirety of the USL Championship that can compete with those numbers. It's that simple. You look at wins, points per game, regardless of who's at the helm, who's running the front office, or the players that are on the pitch, that 100% is the easiest statement to make, bar none. Even more so impressive for Lexington SC if they can come in here and have a clear say of what the outcome could be today. Third game in the organization's history, on the road, the weather, the resume for the home squad. Why not go out and make some noise for yourself? Trying to take that free kick quickly. Play through the lines for Tate Robertson. Back down for Kimball Jackson. Jackson, the 18-year-old from Lexington. Went to Xavier last year, never appeared, and decided to take the pro route once this team came into existence. For Flamini, at the U-20 level for South Africa. They searched for and wide for the players to fill out this team. What key characteristics they were looking for, but the one that stood out the most in our chat with Sam Stockley, they wanted players who seemed to be cast off from other teams. For whatever reason, didn't work out there, dip in form, because they would come in hungry, they would come in humble, ready to learn, and he felt he could mold that team better, and they would be driven. under it. Robertson gets ahead to it. Maris will recover it. Kowazmi had a very difficult debut against El Paso Locomotive. Responsible for two of the goals they conceded in the first half. He was subbed off at halftime. They're excited about what he could bring to the table. A slow start to his Louisville tenure. Let's dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. They continue that ball over the top and Balagoon muscles his way in but commits the foul. side of things isn't really going to be an issue. How's the 
I'll tell you what. That's one, and I know you know what I'm about to say, and you can agree with it. That's one where if that occurs in the middle of the field, the oh, referee's letting them play, right? 100%. Just because of the location, all of a sudden you're leaning a different direction on the call? I have a problem with that. I'm not disagreeing. That's one of those things the that referees The day that at. you and I start to align on referees' decisions, <laughs> given your background, is the day that we can all go home happy. It's supposed to be black and white in referee school, but they do have a little gray area in there. That's also one of those where if it gets called, you're not going to be happy about it. Perez runs in behind, bounces into his path. Perez couldn't do anything with it. Great defensive play by Frankie Martinez. Now a foul against Louisville. Juf on the ground. He's a player that Louisville maybe not too happy to see. Brings back some fresh, painful memories. He was on San Antonio when San Antonio lifted the trophy against Louisville last November. matches all around tonight across US Open Cup Lucia Galusa lost it here's Kimball Jackson to see a bit more of the ball here now, Lexington. All the way back for Austin Causey. It's about four years in the New England Revolution. Academy set up the last couple of years with the Richmond Kickers. Only made one appearance in USL League One for the Kickers. First game was started by Amal Knight, who's the backup goalkeeper tonight. He won the job in the offseason. And then he went away to Haga Cap Nations League with the Jamaican senior national team, the backup. Not all the way back to Zemla. But when he came back him all night, he came back to find that he might not exactly have the same group on the job he had when he left to go with Jamaica. Also, because he came in, had a really good game against North Carolina. And they like the way he's been looking in training. He came into this with a bit of an injury, needed some stitches after he took a knee to the face in that game against North Carolina. They weren't sure if they'd have him. But with the way he's looked at the training and the way he looked in that North Carolina game, Sam Stockley believes that the job might be his, at least for the near future. Good problem to have with those two goalkeepers. I would even take it a step further. Not just a good problem to have, but what trainings are going to be like now. Because mm -hmm. they're both going to be even more hungry sitting in the hot seat in the best of ways, happy with the performances, haven't been their faults at all, goals that have been given up. Some of the guys on the field, obviously, and the fact that both of them high regard for their managers and their performances so far, quotes quite nicely for Lexington SC. Mitchell, you know, the, the relationship right now with Ian Domini within the midfield, they're just trying to find a way to create overloads on their own. Because if you watch the numbers, everywhere you turn, Louisville has the advantage. Outside of the two center backs right now, where you're looking at a man-on-man, -man, a lot of what you're going to see is 3v2s, 4v3s. The way that they're pressing and the, the way that they're applying that, they're creating a lot of numerical advantages for themselves. Lexington's having trouble counteracting that. Very consistent in their lines, but also very flat. So now what you're starting to see, you mentioned them being on the ball a little bit more. They're venturing out of their comfort zones. More depth from Machel. Delmini's coming a little bit higher. We've seen Kalen Fox step off the back line and add some layers to this distribution coming forward. Sam Sockley on the bottom of your screen was just waving players back to come help as that pressure was closing in for Louisville. He's sensing it too. He had nothing but respect for Louisville. It wasn't too long ago that he was in the booth with us doing commentary on USL and he said he remembers all those glory days of Louisville fondly and knows what they bring to the table, first class organization. 
it was candid in saying that they would need a little bit of luck tonight to be on their side. They'd have to be on their best day. Louisville would have to have a bit of an off day. Nothing but respect for Danny Cruz on this Louisville side. Picked up by Ray Serrano. This Louisville team returned 22 players from last year's roster. It was a new high mark for them. It's going to be tough to beat that going forward. Continuity's there. Unfortunately, the injury bug has continued to bite them so far this year the way it did last year. Amadou Dia gets on the end of it. Flag stayed down. Dia serves it up, headed away by Kalen Fox. Mushigalusa. Now Dia, the head for Mushigalusa. In his second year with the club. Outstanding season last year. Difference maker down the left side. Del Piccolo whips it in. Captain Del Piccolo touches it along for Dia. Dia spins inside, lays it off. Here's Maris. Not a player you want to give that much time and space top of the box, but he couldn't get the right touch on it there. Better, though. And this is about the move from Paolo Del Piccolo. Great spin by Amadou Dia, but watch Del Piccolo drift to the left. He carries his runner with him. Tate Robertson had come back to the inside just following the midfielder, but as Del Piccolo comes back out, that vacates all of that space right outside the top of the 18. That not only allows Amadou Dia to cut back to the inside, but then find the aforementioned. Looked along by Duke. Machel skies it. from Muhammad off target looking for Kimmel Jackson. Marius on the turn. Beats Dia. Danny Cruz looking on. Hoping that tonight could be a confidence booster for his club. Wilson Harris waiting for it. Never got the pass he wanted at the penalty spot. Ray Serrano missed everything. and Harris starts the movement too. It's one of the more comfortable locations though for the player in Ray Serrano. Just kind of glides through the lines, cutting back to the inside, dragging multiple players with him. He's had a rough go of it. He's come onto the field, certainly hasn't been poor by any means. He's a guy that you can count on and you know he'll give you quality minutes, but what they're looking for out of him is another level now. They're looking for him to be more consistent within his game. You want to challenge that on the outside flank, that's great. Then can you cut back in on the next sequence? What you're finding through him is it's very touch and go. So he'll he'll cut in three or four times, but then he doesn't give you that glimpse to the outside. The problem is you become predictable as a player. Ray Serrano, who whether you play him on the front line, you can drop him into the midfield three, midfield five. He'll give you good showings anywhere. But at what sort of level is that going to be? And it never helps the fact that you're chasing the ghost that is Brian Ownby. Seems like father time never affects the flanker for Louisville City. Last year, a lot of people called it a rebuild for Louisville. They called it a retool, and part of that retool was getting much younger. Some of the players they brought in, Wilson Harris at the time was 22. Ray Serrano at the time was 19. Enoch Mushigalusa at the time was 22. All these players in the starting 11 tonight and have played a big role over the last year for this club. Harris came in career year with 15 goals. Mushigalusa came in career year with 10 goals. And Ray Serrano was the one who sort of lagged behind a little bit, didn't end up grabbing a position the way those two others did. But again, to your point, that's part of the life behind Brian Ownby. Brian Ownby, career year, 10 goals. Exactly. Right? Second in assists in terms of what he's been able to produce over his long tenure. So. Look, all the more reason, right? When you come on, it's one thing 15, 20 minutes to go to give your manager a showing. But specifically in situations such as this, where you're given the run out from the beginning, you got to give the manager something to think about. Here's Tate Robertson. Louisville recovers well defensively at the back post over the head of William Bainham. It'll stay in for Duke. 
Says Diouf, plays it back for Tariq Mohamed. Mohamed cleared by Tosh. I don't want to be the broadcaster's kiss of death here for Lexington, but in the anatomy of an upset on the road in a tournament like this, keep it scoreless as long as you can. Yeah. Weather ultimate equalizer in a game like this, and checks out. They weathered the early storm. Uh, sorry, that pun was not a dad joke intended. I, 20 I, minutes I apart. I promise you. We're keeping tallies. Keep going. <laughs> uh, you do that, and now all of a sudden it's you on the ball, on the front foot a little bit more. So in the anatomy of an upset, you've checked every box so far. There's a couple of mistakes from both sides, but that could easily swing one way or the other because of the weather, and that's offside. Watch them slipping. I, I just sort of wonder if there's any conversation as to whether or not some of these guys might want to switch cleats at halftime. Because a couple of them, namely the ball that was just swung into the back post, Manny Perez, the outside back from Louisville City, falling. We've seen it twice within the midfield as well and once on the back line for Lexington SC. It's a good look. A little bit longer. Get into the locker room. Go old school, grab some of the long metal ones, have a little fun. Louisville people got in touch with us and made sure to let us know that they have a sub air system designed to get excess moisture off the soil so you shouldn't see a ton of puddling or sliding around. That's in the event that the rain we saw earlier was the only rain and we didn't have ongoing rain, but the skies have since opened up again. The nasty stuff with the lightning that caused the delay has allegedly moved out of the area. Don't want to jinx that, but just some rain now. Back for Kalen Fox. Fox was FC Tucson's player of the year two seasons ago, and they're captain last year in USL League One. So they have a few players littered throughout this roster, Lexington, who have USL experience, be it at the League One or the championship level. Fox, perhaps the most important of those anchoring that back line. Shigalusa give and go with Maris. There's Kalen Fox again. Up over the top for Serrano looking for it. Del Piccolo guides it to Mushigalusa and back again. Through to Mushigalusa. Will he get there? Kept it in, but to your point about slipping, couldn't keep his balance, and it did at the end cross over the line. It seemed like he wanted to cut on a dime and get back to it and just Fred Flintstone it out of play. You can't plant your foot in and even more so gives you an idea of the, the surface because not only could he not cut it back, he couldn't even hit it first time. So your plant foot, you don't have any confidence in it whatsoever. I would say that if that's the case, open the game up a little bit. And a lot of times you drop back a little bit deeper so you can catch something on the spring. The good news is, is that real good job by the back line of Lexington SC just dropping off. They're keeping the game in front of them. And that's the most important thing against this Louisville team is do not chase. You make the mistake of trying to chase, close down space inadvertently, you're going to get yourself into trouble and that's when they can spring on you. Instead, for the most part, especially given it's only their third game ever, they've stayed pretty compact. Something to get your first ever win after losing their first two League One games in this tournament against the team perceived to be big brother in the state of Kentucky. Neither side really felt there was any rivalry here yet. They've got the proximity and that's about it for right now. No history between the two. Sometimes you'll see if a club pops up in this sort of proximity, you'll have coaches poached. That didn't happen. So no bad blood. It would take a game or two, they felt, to create some history. And with this Open Cup format, where it's regional, you could see this matchup for all intents and purposes in the second round annually. Which is why we need a better name for it. <laughs> Social media just said they like the uh, the Derby Derby. Other way, right? Wait. Derby Derby. Derby Derby. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Saw a Commonwealth Clash, Bluegrass Battle. Eh. Derby Derby's fun. six matches in play around U.S. Open Cup. Make that seven. The Tulsa battle just kicked off between Tulsa Athletic and FC Tulsa. Not a lot of goal scoring going on so far. 
Charlotte Independence up 1-0 at half over Appalachian. Loudoun United up 1-0 at half over North Carolina FC. Ocean City up 1-0 at half over Maryland Bobcats. And the story there is a red card <laughs> each in the first half. So whatever's going on there. Goal scorer red carded. <laughs> the goal scorer was Jackson. The score in the 22nd, sent off in the 38th. Oh, goodness. He and Don Smart hanging out together. The magic of the cup. The other three games are all scoreless. This one here, Chattanooga against Birmingham. And then Tormenta against RGV. Tormenta, one of those teams in USL League One who went on a bit of a run last year, and they carried that into their regular season. They won the USL League One title. Mushigalusa huddling Fox, and it's all the way out for a corner. Last year, when USL League One teams it's met USL Championship teams here in the second round, it was the third division League One teams who had a 5-2 and two record. Louisville was one of those two wins. They beat Chattanooga 1-0. Well, that's impressive for League One. A statement last year, winning five of the seven. Another crack at a corner from Maris for the back post. Causey went for a spill. Somebody undercut him. No call was made. His teammates are pleading for a foul to have been called. Let's have a look. Own player, oh, that's why. Yep, you know, that's Balagoon just coming back underneath. Going to cause him to come out and five. challenge for the ball, but obstructed a little bit, and that is a heck of a knock on anyone, but especially all six foot four of the lead Balagoon. They changed the call to a goal kick. They're initially calling it a corner. Sam Stockley having a word with Tate Robertson over on the sideline. Robertson, a part of an upset of a USL championship team last year again when Chattanooga FC of Niso won 3 to 1 over Memphis 901. Tosh all the way back to a man whose name we have not at all called tonight. Oliver Zella, the goalkeeper. He'd hope to keep it that way. Dia uh, misplay. Mushigalusa finds it in space. It was Kimball Jackson slipping as he tried to clear it. Whipped in the back post. Glancing header from Harris went wide. Barely kept his balance and got something on it. Harris. Out to Mushigalusa. Has the overlap from Dia. Keeps it himself. And there goes that attack. That's a, that's a save and a half. That's not even a shot wide. This is make Dad proud. Austin Causey, watch this deflection in the bottom corner. Now beautiful in terms of the run that you're going to see here from Wilson Harris. Notice how he just drifts in between the defenders. Late run. Watch this touch right there. Magnificent goalkeeping. When we slow it down for you, this thing's headed to the bottom corner. Plants his feet, left paw out. Excellent save by Austin Causey. That is officially the first save of the match. The 36 minute first shot on target for either side. Shows for Perez and just sloppy with it out of play. We talked about the goalkeeper battle on one side for Lexington with Causey and Amal Knight on the other side. Louisville City FC sort of has the same thing with Kyle Morton and Oliver Zemla. Really interesting path that Zemla took to this Louisville roster. Was drafted 41st overall this past year by the Colorado Rapids with them for a preseason trial. Did it work out? They talked about bringing him back in for their MLS Next Pro side. And he realized that this was the route he wanted to take. Goalkeeper coach for Louisville had been scouting him for a while, even while he was in college at Marshall. Felt he would be a good fit, and this would be a good spot to develop him more so than remaining with the Rapids. So they got it done, signed here, and 
somehow Morton has had some injury issues the last couple of years. So Zemla may be called upon for other reasons, but even if both are fully healthy, it's going to be quite the battle all season long. Head coach of Marshall University, Chris Grassi, who Ali Zemla won a national championship with in 2020. We've got an opportunity to experience them firsthand, but more importantly, dig into what it would look like for Ali Zemla next level. Dia for Serrano. Brilliant touch to keep it down. He's taken down. They wanted a penalty. They didn't get it. And Maris is down in a lot of pain in the middle of the park, holding his head and his ankle. Yellow card was just shown for Flamini. Cut back from Ray Serrano is the real question mark. Is how much of it is him actually making contact and how much of it is him with his feet coming out from underneath him. And Frankie Martinez, touch right there. See, it's his feet, he slips. I thought it was Frankie Martinez, it was Tariq Mohammed. apologies. Martinez drifts back in and right there, there is contact, yes, but actually Ray Serrano starts to lose his footing. The bigger concern is Il Maris behind the scenes. Already struggling with that injury to the hand. Now all of a sudden, Reaching towards that ankle. Oh, and El Piccolo rewarded for his efforts with the yellow card. Well, the first one was to Lamini. El Piccolo must have picked it up for something he said to the referee. Unless he's just handing out Christmas presents for fun. <laughs> and the question is for Dylan Maris, the, the tackle that's put on him. Flamini coming back through. Looks to be the right ankle right there. Clips him. I wonder if that's the studs, the stud on bone that just leaves a stinger. Danny Cruz not happy about it. Well, the argument is studs up. That's its intent on the tackle itself. I wonder if Danny Cruz is more upset about the no penalty call or the tackle on Maris. It, Probably it, both. It, for, for me, it's the it's the tackle on Maris because watch the studs. Even though the ball bounces up in that fashion, watch him leave his feet. Watch the studs up. With the left stretching foot. through on the left foot, that's the argument from Danny Cruz. If he gets an opportunity to see the completion of that play on the backside, he will see that Serrano, although he does get a touch on it, when he goes to turn. He's already falling, so the body starts to simulate on his own. I'm not saying that he's simulating, but the body's natural positioning is coming out from underneath. He's leaning forward, even though the contact does occur, it's after the fact. And with Serrano going down there, again on the slip, what is that like in the locker room at halftime of a game like this? Are you just trying on different ones? Do you know exactly which cleat you want to maybe go to? How does that all work? It's personal preference. I mean, there are guys that are going to continue to play in this, and they'll be fine. There are some guys who don't even want to get studs on like longer ones they're uncomfortable they don't like how it sticks in the ground that's usually because you don't have repetition in them it's a slower game it's odd because they get in out of the ground faster but pivoting because they're longer it takes you longer to get your foot out of the turf so when you start to stick in it reminds me a little bit of artificial turf because you go to turn and it just sticks that much longer it does put more pressure on your joints they hurt Bottom line. And even though there's a up. slip right here from Kawasmi, and Lexington turned it into something. He squandered immediately. Right on cue, and other players slips at a big moment. And even though science has gotten better over the years, it's still the bottom. You get hot spots on your feet too, and something's got to be done there. If you're part of the technical group for this team, you're already going in saying, listen, equipment manager, we gotta have a conversation. Are we willing to make that change? And if so, how many guys actually have that in their locker? Some guys don't even carry them as part of their arsenal. Just a few minutes remaining here before halftime. With Devin Kerr, I'm Joe Malpa. Happy to have you with us for this second round matchup between Lexington and Louisville. First ever meeting between these two new neighbors. Over the top, knotted down by Serrano from Mushigalusa. Out to Maris, looks to be okay after that tackle. Doesn't appear to be limping or anything like that. Tosh picks out the runner Perez. The ball not there. Del Piccolo, he's taken down. Play continues. 
the referee might be playing advantage of bringing it back, and I think the few thousand in attendance thought the same thing. Lushigalusa been busy in this first half. For as busy as he's been, he hasn't had that last piece of the puzzle on the cross. He sailed a few of those with the left foot. Call it out, Piccolo, right in the middle of the field. Watch the arm, there's definite contact. From the referee, I'm bowling a foul. It's two for two tonight that we agree, so. He embellished it a little bit, but there Don't was care. certainly an extension of the arms. It had to be called. If you kick me, <laughs> it doesn't matter how I fall, you kicked me. I mean, it's that simple, right? This one just happens to be the arm, which makes it even worse. That one's a foul. And the 2023 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup continues with more exciting twists and turns over the coming weeks. Tomorrow night, join us here on the BR app or BR Football's YouTube channel at 6.30 p.m. for the third round draw, followed by the Richmond Kickers of USL League One hosting Cleveland SC from the NPSL. One leading right into the other, so you're covered tomorrow night. Amadou Dia back for Gibson. Quiet first half for Gibson in the midfield. Hasn't had to do a ton. Del Piccolo on the turn. Falling as he took the shot. Tariq Mohammed over the top looking for Duf. Tosh. Heads him off of the pass and cleared away by Zemla. Tariq Mohammed, player with some experience in this side for Lexington. 23-year-old who was with Canada's U-17 side for the 2017 CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. Following year for the U-20s in the CONCACAF Under-20. On the roster again. And then professionally, has experience in both the USL Championship and League One with Toronto FC 2. They were part of USL Championship before dropping down to League One in 2019. And Muhammad, the last couple of years, 36 appearances in the Canadian Premier League between Edmonton and York. 23 years of age, but again, to that point that Sam Stockley made to us in our chat, players who for whatever reason fell out of favor at their former club, still young, still moldable, and hungry and humble, ready for the next opportunity. Muhammad fix the bill. And just one minute tacked down at the end of this first half before everybody can go in, towel off, get some new cleats. That's about chocolate. Mushigalusa again down this left side. It is 69 degrees tonight in Louisville, but not the nicest of nights. Plenty of rain through and wind in the teens in miles per hour, so a chill in the air. Here's the last play of the half here. Out to Amadou Dia. Minute of stoppage time has come and gone. Dia to the back post, the header wide from Harris, kept in for a moment by Serrano. And there is your whistle to end a wet and slip and slide of a first half. Positive for Alexing and SC. It's 0-0. That's the most important thing right now. You're going into the dressing room with the belief that you can get this job done. Don't care what the opponent is or Mother Nature being involved. You have done your job after 45 minutes and you haven't conceded. The storm's only going to continue, though. And that's the skies up above. That's Louisville City. The layers to their attack that they're going to add. you got to find a way to create more opportunities for your guys up top to relieve some of the pressure on this back line. Because I promise you, Mushigalusa, Wilson Harris, and everybody else behind them are going to be hungry come the second half. Well, we were delayed a half an hour because of the weather. That still had an impact once we did kick off. Saturated field as the rains continued. As the game wore on, Lexington grew into it here in their U.S. Open Cup curtain raiser. First ever time, Louisville hoping to get back on their horse and run. Made it to the round of 16 last time, but we're all tied at zero through 45. More to come from Lynn Family Stadium.
As you closer and closer to the start of half number two here at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, where it's scoreless between Louisville and Lexington. Had 10 matches all around yesterday in U.S. Open. Come take a look at the scores from those. Nothing really stuck out as far as cup sets go. The quote-unquote favorite in every match prevailed, but some were harder than others. San Antonio pushing the brink by Club de Leon. Well, that's what happens when you play 25 nine-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. San Antonio rolling out an academy squad, and that's being kind. But Club de Leon will tell you what, their amateur squad, very well known. Unfortunately, that didn't funnel into the USL Championship victors of 2023. Chalk, 7-0. Oh, by the way, Flower City Union taking it down as well. And friendly reminder that uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds advance. They were given a one to nothing celebratory victory due to the departure of Rochester, New York FC. Does Bob Lilly still get to enjoy a quote unquote victory against his former club or not, absolutely it the same? Absolutely. It's not the same though because they're, they're, they're just they're just a rhino. They're no longer the rhinos and they're certainly that's, that's not raging. That's true. That's true. Well, they're nothing now. Well, it's mostly scoreless everywhere else. A goal here or there. Charlotte over Appalachian, Loudon over North Carolina, Ocean City. Make sure we remind you that it's, uh, it's one red card each in that game as well. Bottom middle of your screen, Des Moines Menace, Chattanooga. That'll be a match. I'm all for that. That is Chattanooga, great Nisa squad, and Des Moines Menace. If you don't know, now you know. Just go wiki them. Their Wikipedia page is a wealth of greatness that stretches eons within United States soccer history. And Corey Herzog led them to a second round victory in Open Cup last year. So remember they have another victory in store as well tonight. We'll see if we have a victor here through 90 minutes. Otherwise 120 and maybe penalties. Scoreless still between Louisville and Lexington. Half number two in just a few moments. Players have made their way back out onto the field. Hopefully a change of clothes in store in the locker room as well after soaking rains in the first half. We take a look at highlights from half number one. And to be fair, weren't all that many. One shot on target combined in the first 45 minutes. Was that an ode to Brad Johnson? I love the NFL quarterback who literally changed <laughs> his uniform at halftime, regardless of circumstance. Look, I'm sure plenty of guys out there would like to change, but as a player, you get into these moments, you don't want it. You want to try and repeat things over and over and over again. Unfortunately, neither one of those teams could do that in the first half. Half chances at best. Some taken nonchalantly by Amadou Dia, which ends up in an opportunity for Balagoon up top. This actually would be blown back as a foul. An extended forearm from Talib Balagoon. How about set piece opportunities in cup sets that can always come back to either help or haunt you. Almost. And the former here for Causey on the back post, taken out by Balagoon once again. He was popular in the first half for sure, just not for the best reasons. Foul, knock on the goalkeeper, and then 
what could have been possibly the best opportunity of the night so far. This is some kind of save from Austin Causey. Watch the back post flick. Beautifully taken by Wilson Harris, to be fair. It was a great run, but an even better save by the goalkeeper. And as the half continued to wind to a close, it was Amadou Dia with one last chance to get a ball through. And it was there the header at the back post for Wilson Harris. If he were two or three inches taller. In the end, scoreless through 45. Couple of changes at the half on the Lexington side. We see Owen Green and Nico Brown come into the match for Kimball Jackson and Atez Dieu. Nice ball on the Louisville side. It's Louisville in the purple now from left to right. Lexington in the white from right to left. We're underway in half number two. Second round of the 2023 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup with former German pro Devin Kerr. I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us this evening. 45 minutes perhaps to put one of these two teams into tomorrow's draw. Play an extra half hour if needed and then penalties beyond that. Still a long way to go to get there tonight. Nico Brown coming in. 24 year old from Baltimore, Maryland. Two appearances this season. Spent the last couple of years with Greenville Triumph in USL League One. Three goals in 26 appearances. And he started their Open Cup game last year only over the Oakland Roots. Just keeping an eye on it. And right there, Owen Green went out of the right back spot for Lexington SC and what he's capable of. Friendly reminder that he was utilized quite regularly at the outside mid positions for South Georgia Tormenta. Last year en route to the USL League One title. By the way, you mentioned the record for League One versus Championship squads. South Georgia Tormenta up 1 0 at halftime. Courtesy of John Murphy Jr. Ian Cameron's squad once again starting to turn some heads. Last year they started it off with a win over the Charleston Battery. Ended up making it through a couple of rounds, played three matches in all. Lost in the fourth round. Did it upset you there were no cup sets yesterday? You know, looking at the schedule, and no disrespect to any of the low division sides from yesterday, none of them felt like cup sets. They all felt a bridge too far, and it turned out to play out that way. Today, on the other hand, I won't say which ones, but there were three that I picked out that I saw cup sets in. I'll tell you off the air later. Corner whipped in, <laughs> headed away. But there were three that I picked out today, and I'm curious to see if those three go the way I thought they would. Now, I was definitely sure that Pittsburgh would beat Rochester. Got that one right already. Mohammed saved by Zemla. First time that he's called in the question. First shot of the day, first shot on target of the day for Lexington. He catches this clean. This is really impressive. Watch the quick turn, head up. And as he hits this, this thing dips on the tail end of it. Notice it moving away from the goalkeeper. Semla's got a little trouble with it. Well done as he starts to move to his right, but because of the positioning and the ball movement, he's just got to be safe and push it to the side. If you really want me to tell you who they were, I will. I'll I won't guess keep them. it a secret. I'll guess them. Okay. There were three that I thought, without a doubt, upset right here. Or you like the Omaha El Paso game? That is actually not one of them. I'm shocked. That okay. is not one of them. I thought about it, but I've seen El Paso this year. I saw El Paso tear apart Louisville a couple of weeks ago. So I did not think that one. You were probably thinking North Carolina over Loudon. I would have disagreed with you, though. That is one of them. Okay. Um. From the corner for Lexington. Steered away by Tosh. Oh, I bet you probably would have taken Tormento of RGV. That was one of them. Yeah, so you got two of the three. Well, I guess my own one. <laughs> Some space here for Harris striding forward. Splits it through to Serrano. Ray Serrano's in, cuts it back. It's deflected wide. Whiskers wide of the near post. I think they wanted a handball. They're going to get a corner out of it. Whether or not it was a handball is a whole nother argument, but Ray Serrano, I wanted him to hit this quicker. Wilson Harris in space, beautiful vision. Hit it now, 
Instead, little pause, hand bites, a massive missed call. Thought it was off the head, absolutely. Off the arm, extended away from the body, still had a chance for the back corner and the near post. Maris swings in the corner. I mean, he had his hand raised like he knew the answer in math class. It was straight up in the air. A little surprised, to be honest, with the direction that the referee was running and the assistant referee on the near touch line that they missed that. Nabil Ben Salah saw nothing nefarious. Did you come up with the third one yet, or did you get a pass on it? Percolating. <laughs> So is this attack here for Lexington. Bainham for Brown sliding in. Many Perez. I told you I'm still surprised that you didn't pick the Union Omaha El Paso game. I feel like that'd be too obvious. Last year Omaha made it through the quarterfinal. Kudos to them, but had a lot of change this year. Head coach, personnel. Off, you're off the beaten path in the third one, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Well, this will give it away, but... Don't give it away. Uh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I'll tell you, historically, and I haven't seen their roster this year, I'll be honest, I might have jumped at the opportunity to pick LA Force over Vegas, but I haven't seen the roster from LA Force is the problem. That's a squad that Anissa, you know, year and a half, two years running. You and I had them last year when they played Orange County. And they were good. Yeah, they, were they, good. they, they had some, some good players for sure. I mean, are you really you're not taking the Monterey Bay at Central no, Valley? No. no. All right, I give up. It's Des Moines. For me, that's a principal pick. Uh, I mean, is, is that an upset? Technically, I think so. No, well, you obviously haven't read the history books. <laughs> well, to me, to me, Chattanooga beating, or Des Moines beating Chattanooga is not an upset. Historically, no. Yeah. But Nisa team against Des Moines, it's, in terms of the pyramid, it's an upset. Yeah. Mushigalusa. Good ball. Serrano squares it back to Piccolo, tries to push his way through, but Simkazi is there. Rolled out into some space here. Nico Brown. Back for Dlamini, who's on a yellow card. The official stats never went back and credited Del Piccolo with the yellow in the first half. We saw it look like he was shown one. I'm not sure if he has one or not. The only confirmation we received was for the yellow card to Dlamini. So if you're keeping track at home, we know Dlamini's got to be careful. We don't necessarily know about Del Piccolo for sure. Del Piccolo goes down in the middle. Perez keeps the play going. Dragged to the far post by Harris, but wide. Verbal sparring after the pack from Paolo Del Piccolo, who not only is upset with the referee for the missed call right at the top of the box, at least in his eyes. This is an area for Manny Perez as he continues his game on. It's a half opportunity for Wilson Harris for sure. I want to see him be able to cut it and hit those. Now he's got a tremendous right foot, Manny Perez from Louisville City, the outside back. But it's also pretty easy to telegraph where that's going to go. Because of his speed, change of direction, and how good his service is, 99 times out of 100, he's going to cut it to the right and then try and bring it back in. Now, that may be a couple of cuts to then get him to the end line, but I would love to see him develop the interior part of his game on that left foot. Adds another dimension to your game. All of a sudden, it's a two-way. Much more difficult for defenders to pick out which direction you're going to head. Manny Perez, one of those guys who feels like he's been around forever and is older than he is, but just 24 years old. First out of the scene back in 2019 for North Carolina FC. Perez made 10 MLS appearances with Austin FC on loan of the club in 2021 as well. In his way to Louisville last season. Times last year, Danny Cruz called him the best right back in all of USL Championship. Maris came in with a handball. A little chicken wing out there. Tried to hide it maybe with that soft cast he's got on his right arm, but 
that handball was noticed. Louisville feels hard done that one that should have given them a penalty a few moments ago was not. So we continue on 10 minutes in the second half, scoreless. Here's Lexington working ahead through Robertson out to Nico Brown. Nico Brown patient, left footed shot is deflected over the bar. He just didn't catch it cleanly. It looked like it changed direction initially, but out for a goal kick. Comes down to decision making once again. You know, put the intent in your mind and then go execute. You start to slow down, you remove some of your options. Touch, hit that. You take all these touches, you actually go back to the same spot that you started at. Two touches back to the inside. The only thing that changes is now Ray Serrano forces you onto your left foot against Manny Perez. You also had the trailing run of Tariq Mohammed that you could have laid it off to. Tosh. Pressured by Balagoon all the way back for Zemla, who's just had to make one big save so far in this one. Ali Zemla. National champion at Marshall. Zemla, two-time All-Conference USA, one-time Conference USA Goalkeeper of the Year. Let's also understand with him that he's got a high IQ as well. I'm not talking about street smarts. This is a guy who has got a six-figure contract and an internship lined up in the tech world. Played into Del Piccolo and grabbed. Fumbled now. Foul called against Louisville. Between two decisions, only Semla. He's very calm, methodical. And similar to Austin Causey a second ago, and this little step into the box. But discussing with Chris Grassi what what this looked like for him. Understand that the opportunity with Louisville after being drafted by the Rapids. You go back last summer, he actually trained with Louisville and Tulsa during the summer between college to try and get some experience at the professional ranks and he loved every single minute of it. Chris Cressy said that in 20 years of coaching, he's never seen anybody better. And that's from balls being whipped in from the corners, shot stopping, there's not a weak leak in his game. And if you watched him, there's a reason why he was as good as he was at Marshall. Only 41 goals given up in 54 career appearances, which included 25 shutouts. Certainly took a different path. A couple of years longer, the international, which is probably the biggest knock on him going into MLS Super Draft was that he does have that Monaco, an international player. We have to quote unquote, waste a roster spot. You're not gonna waste anything on him. That's just about continuing the development and whether or not you wanna put the resources into it. Blue City, very fortunate to come out on top on that aspect. The international roster spot I could see, but be surprised if anybody really looked at him and was turned off by his age. I know in the draft you want to go younger, but for keepers, you figure that they get better with age, and it shouldn't be a knock that he's 25. You would hope. He's really good with his feet, too. I'll tell you that much. He is, you bring him off the line, normally played a very advanced role for Marshall. And whether or not Louisville City continue to use him in that same fashion, a different story. Don't expect that here tonight with the way the weather conditions are. Serrano cuts in, cuts a ball to Perez at the end line. Perez squares it back. Mushigalusa skies it. Best movement of the night offensively for Louisville. It was there for Mushigalusa. Well, this is what we talked about for Ray Serrano coming back in, and look how comfortable he is. He knows that the second he comes, he's going to give himself two opportunities. One, the continuation of his own run. The second is the vacated space out on the right-hand side. Chooses the ladder. Great job by Perez and for Mushigalusa. This is ingrained in you in your training sessions over and over and over again. Ball across, head down, sticking in the bottom corner. That goes back to their past couple of performances. So some of the doubts starting to creep in. Doesn't matter how much you have the ball or opportunities given. Those don't start to bury themselves. It plants a seed of doubt. That bodes well for Lexington. 
Shigalusa with it again. Two hundred and eighty two minutes since they last scored a goal. Louisville that came against Monterey Bay in a one nil victory on the road out west. Close to 300 minutes scoreless, and that is not something we're used to seeing out of this club. Change coming here. Dylan Maris' night ends. In comes Gonzalez. Oscar Jimenez, Brian Ownby coming in as well. Ushigalusa, Wilson Harris, and Maris are the three exiting. Correction there, Manny Perez, one of the players coming off. Looks like Wilson Harris is staying on. So Perez, Mushigalusa, and Maris off for Gonzalez, Ownby, and Jimenez. This will be interesting on the front line, Ryan Ownby and Ray Serrano. I would imagine this is going to be Ownby to the far side of the field. That's what we saw last time out. Brian Ownby pretty comfortable anywhere on that front three. They were playing in the nine position when Herman Lancaster and Wilson Harris were unavailable last year. Or moving on to the right-hand side, which we've all become accustomed to. Friendly reminder, last year, 10 goals. Nice mark in his career, nine assists, second best effort. Only be preceded by previous season, 11 in 2021. Very known to be getting better, like a fine wine. Tosh. Those substitutions maybe indicate that Danny Cruz wants to put this thing to bed here. Serrano for a throw in. Harris settled by Del Piccolo. Back to the right foot. Intercepted by Mohamed. Tariq Mohamed looks long. Malagun ready to run. Zemlo run it well. Seems that if they are to break through, it's going to be something like that, right? Long ball out of the back. They've had to withstand a ton of pressure. Lexington SC. I'd love to see Bainham on the ball a little bit more. I know that's easier said than done, given the amount of ground that this loose city team covers. But Balagoon, you can see him working up top, and he's trying to stretch and apply pressure. We just haven't been able to get the second output right there. That gray area just underneath. Tyler Gibson almost always cutting off that pass. A direct ball over the top is how they gave up a couple of goals against El Paso and Sacramento, Louisville. Jimenez. Well, that and they couldn't put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> Let's call spade a spade. <laughs> Danny Cruz was candid about those last couple of games, particularly Sacramento. We've seen Sacramento Republic not only have success in USL, but also in this tournament last year making the final. Heard of them. <laughs> and he said that if you go up against that team on their best day and you are anything but your best, 5-0 is going to be the scoreline. There was some good to come out of the trip, though. This is true. You know, the relationship between the city manager, Danny Cruz, and Mark Briggs, head coach of Sacramento Republic known fact that Danny Cruz is actually the godfather to Mark Briggs's baby boy. It was the first opportunity because of COVID and travel schedules that he had actually got an opportunity to meet him. So love that. Even though some choice words were used <laughs> on the back end of that about how the how the meeting on the field went. A silver lining to every dark cloud. Absolutely. I get it. Change being prepared, it looks like, for Lexington. Attendance at Ounce and House, over 4,000 for Louisville here on a very, very wet night. Left behind by Balagoon, realized he was offside, so Bainham carries it. William Bainham feeds Mohammed. Tariq Mohammed has the space to take one. It's blocked. 
Nico Brown shields it out. Corner coming for Lexus, and you said it started the half, Devin. In a match like this, if you're looking for that cup set, capitalize on a set piece. No, why not? Especially with the way these conditions are falling. Just like the players in the field. So you can get clever, too. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt that you've got high tier advantage. Bainham, 6-3. Balagoon, 6-4. Machel, 6-2. And you can continue on a couple other boys on the back line that carry quite a tall presence. He's got some big boys, too, but some mismatches. Corner over everybody, headed away by Toj, put back into the mixer. Jimenez slips. Robertson cuts it back for Mohamed. Jimenez got back to his feet, but Gibson slipped then. Down this side. All these little players slipping nearly, leading to a chance for Lexington. All the way back now for Causey. Don Smart getting ready to check in for Lexington. We're told for the moment that it's supposed to be for William Bainham and something you picked up so far here in the first couple of games for Lexington is that they're not afraid to move Machel around the field. He was on the higher line in the first game for Lexington, dropped back into the midfield because Smart picked up a red card in that first game. I wonder if this is a way to get Machel further up the field and help create. That's the only player I specifically asked about, right, when in direct relation to what the system was going to look like. And he does give you the advantage, just his ability to play multiple areas, but he's very athletic. There was a move a second ago. He was the one on the near post. Dia clips it. Harris lines it up, puts it into the ground, and gathered by Causey. Don Smart, very calm on the ball. He brings this presence that's ever steady. That will help slow some things down here. It will allow some of these runs coming back to get themselves set a little bit earlier from a central location or not. Even the ball movement by Lou City outside in. Fresh legs once again. B for Harris skips away. This is everything you want, though, if you're Lexington. The stars are aligning right now. The weather in the way, just dropping stuff all over the pitch. Just like Serrano there. Free kick on the way for Louisville. And a yellow to Muhammad. Another slip, and wow. That is. There's no shin guard saving you from that one. Hurting. Yeah, that is. Take your yellow, walk away, never look back. I don't know that that was a red. No. Okay. Just saying. There's no there, argument. There's no, there's no reason to. <laughs> to have any other say about it, Correct. right? You were in the wrong, you made a massive mistake. Get back, help your team get organized. No big deal, and let's move on with it. It's a different story here for Ray Serrano. That's gonna take a minute. Looks like it wrapped around and just caught him on the side of the leg. You would need a 360 degree shin guard to have prevented that one from hurting. And Del Piccolo. Well, the options here on the free kick for Louisville. Getting closer and closer to 90. 22 minutes to go. And they have one to pull ahead here, Louisville. Del Piccolo for the back post. There it is! It's the old guard for Louisville. Del Piccolo to Tosh and a 1 0 lead. Set, set pieces. Keep an eye when the game's not going your way, when it feels like everything's stacked against you. This is the best way to get back in. 
Would there be trickery on the little five-yard ball? To Oscar Mendez peeled off? No. The left-footed one to Paolo Del Piccolo in full display once again. And Sean Tosh, who just continues to reinvent himself from dead ball situations. Hasn't been pretty, but they've got their lead. Tucked in, locked in, Blue City out in front. A little tough to high five at a poncho, but they made it work. 69th minute, the goal for Tosh. Those two have been here seemingly forever for Louisville. Del Piccolo, the club's all-time leader in appearances. Tosh, the club's all-time leader in minutes played. And they get it done here in the Open Cup. Is there more in store now? Gonzalez ranging forward through the smoke. Our answer Del Piccolo was never shown the yellow in the first half, otherwise, he would have been sent off here because he picks it up now. Appreciate the rule clarification. <laughs> Danny Cruz not happy with the foul clarification. Smart came out of the field during that celebration for Louisville. It was actually for Balagoon who came off. Initially, we were told it was going to be Bainham. It got to be Balagoon. If you're Lexington, you're still in this. I remember, it was just moments ago that having the conversation of a way for them to steal the game away from a dead ball opportunity. Don't let that be removed from your thought process. Just because of the subs, the goal given away. Both teams have made plenty of mistakes. Whether or not, stay positive. Listen to your manager on the sideline, Sam Stockley. Very aggressive. Here is Machel, almost brought it down off the chest. And it is Batum still out there, so confirmation that Halagoon came off the field and those two are now the striking tandem. Interesting relationship, right? Between the two. Two big target men if they want to start going direct in the air. We can use the aggression to your advantage too because Loose City is, they're hungry. One, they're not going to feel comfortable. Conversation within their organization will still be pressure on turnovers. Let's press, create opportunities. Within that, mistakes will come. We've certainly seen that over the course of the night. Look at the numbers here. That's the idea, though, is that if you can push them into awkward situations where you're creating the overload instead of what they were doing to you, you spin an extra one out of the midfield, more movement out of Bainham. Stances past a couple of defenders. Out to Serrano. Ray Serrano drives it into Harris. One other final score so far. Charlotte Independence 2-0 over Appalachian. And another change coming here for Lexington. Jalen James on. Tariq Muhammad off. Loudon and North Carolina are still tied at one. Looks like they might be headed to an extra half hour. Maryland Bobcats, second half comeback. They were down 1-0 at the break against Ocean City Nor'easters. Bobcats score in the 67th and 83rd. A 2-1 lead now in second half stoppage time. Birmingham, a 2-0 lead on the road over Chattanooga Red Wolves. Formenta still holding on 1-0 over RGV. At halftime at home, Indy 11 down 1-0. The Michigan Stars and Des Moines Menace, no magic there tonight, it looks like. Chattanooga up 2-0 on the road. And scoreless at halftime in the game between Tulsa Athletic and FC Tulsa and Union Omaha and El Paso. Four matches set to kick off in the next hour. One in the 9 o'clock Eastern hour, it's Colorado Springs against Northern Colorado. And then five to 10 o'clock Eastern hour. We end the night with Phoenix and Greenville at 10.30 Eastern.
Robertson back for Martinez. It's more indicative of the night that Lexington has had where the chances have been few and far between, but Tate Robertson, man, we haven't called a lot. We felt that if they were to have any dangerous attacks in this one, he would be part of the engine for that. Here he is now on the left side. It's an extremely attack-minded look for Lexington right now. The question is whether or not they can actually get enough numbers forward to take advantage of it. Cue it. Brown goes down. Stockley wanted a call. Think about the fact that both of your outside backs and Tate Robertson and Owen Green, although certainly can play the marking back position, I just mentioned for Owen Green coming over from South Georgia Tormenta, primarily on the flanks in advanced roles within the midfield last year. Same argument for Tate Robertson. So you've got really four exterior players in the midfield on the, on the pitch right now. Speed, relationships, try and take advantage of that, get the overlapping runs going. I understand that as you progress forward, you're taking more and more chances, but there's only 15 minutes left in the game. You know that you're going to expose yourself, but if you're going to go down, you might as well go down with a fight. Here is Robertson. He goes down, but no call. There's no goal differential. There's no aggregate two-legged tie. If you don't score in the next 15 minutes, your Open Cup dream is dead tonight. Serrano all the way back for the goal scorer, Tosh. At some point last year, all of a sudden, Sean Tosh morphed into a striker for Louisville and nine goals on the season. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a record in USL Championship for a defender in a season. Even if from the spot for a bunch, it doesn't <laughs> they matter. Still count. They, they, same number on the board, right? Six in his entire career. Spanning back to 2015, all of a sudden nine in one season. Good touch. Jimenez. It's up for a corner. I'll tell you, I'm not sure what's better here. The touch by Oscar Jimenez to break through the back line or the fact that Frankie Martinez recognizes it, slips over, and the center back is able to go to ground and get stuck in. Last year was Tosh's third straight season. Earning USL All League first team honors. We'll look for him again here on the set piece. Lurking at the back post right now. Corner comes in just over Tosh's head. He was snapping down, looking for that header. And they will do it again. Stoping all end faithful and banging the drum all game long. Rain or shine. Now a dozen minutes from the end, up 1 0, looking for another punched away by Causey. Gonzalez back for Dia. Madu Dia switches it wide for Jimenez. Serrano. Now they'll slow it down with Tosh. One shot on target for Lexington tonight. There's that brilliant strike from distance by Mohammed that forced Zemla into a diving save. Jimenez finds the overlap of Serrano. It's been an issue tonight for Louisville, whether it was Musha Galusa down the left side or Serrano or somebody else down this right side. So many of those crosses just ended up into the stands. And here's Carlos Bogo coming in for Palo Del Piccolo. Captain hands off the band to Brian Ownby, one of the OGs of Louisville City, Palo Del Piccolo, local legend as well, Louisville Cardinal from 2009, 2012, been with the club since 2016. Passing the torch of sorts to Carlos Mogul, one of the young players we talked about that scouted years ago, has been involved with the first team for a couple of seasons now. 12 years old, the first time he saw Louisville City and a chance to go see them play at the then Slugger Field. Things are a little different now. 
Sutton Academy product from first team turn European hopeful. This organization has certainly had that buzz around it for a couple of seasons now, thanks to Josh Winder and Jonathan Gomez. Jalen James, the yellow card, and I had a chance to ask Danny Cruz a couple of weeks ago about Mogul. It's anecdotal, but it always feels like a big leap for a player comes between year one when he gets his first taste of the first team and then year two when he has a full offseason knowing that he's going to be a part of that first team mix. And Danny's answer was very telling. He said that Mogul took a massive leap in the offseason, lost a lot of body fat, put on a lot of muscle. The only reason he didn't start the first couple of the games of the season was that he felt he needed a veteran presence on the road going out west for a couple of games. So Tyler Gibson played, but he's very comfortable with him being one of the first choice options in that midfield. And he expects him to become a household name in the league this year with the offseason he had. One of the most consistent players all preseason long. To be body fat when you're 19 years of age, isn't that still baby weight? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that age you're learning how to actually be a pro it's not just whether or not you can play at a level it's going in the repetitions every single day treat it like a job gonna have the right mentality and Carlos Mogul we've seen on and off the field so far certainly does and he's risen to a point where he's expected to play in this lineup you and I had a chance to be there for the USL title game last year and to be candid, when the starting 11 came out, you and I were surprised that Mogul wasn't in it based on the matchup with San Antonio. So the fact that at the end of his first year, we were expecting him to start in the final speaks volumes about the player he is. They were also so banged up. Of course. Right. And that's you know, unfortunately for Danny Cruz of Louisville City, the conversation that you're having now is actually quite similar to that in the faithful day. Mid-November is so many players injured and good news is, is they have acquired so much depth. And what sort of argument will be said for Lexington SC in a few years' time as they try and reach down in and bring some players off the bench, hearing that Cesar Mario Jr. will join the fun. This is far more David than Goliath right now. <laughs> I promise you that. There's a lot more greenery in between these two. Nothing wrong with that. So one of the best quotes that I've heard this season from any manager actually came from the Phoenix Rising manager, Juan Guerra, talking about their new system, new players, and you can obviously attribute that to Lexington. He said, in order to experience the greatness of heaven, you have to experience the depths of hell. I thought that was a very interesting quote. And you can interpret that whatever you want, but the way that I look at it is, is new players, new system, new organization, come in, put in the work together, suffer to get to the mountaintop, right? You got to circle back to him and tell him to put that on a poster. I see that hanging in gyms and offices. I've already, those I've motivational already bought the shirt. Posters. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> They're coming up at 10.30 Eastern time against Greenville, which is a bit of a revenge game for Juan. Last year when he was the head coach of the Oakland Roots, they went out to Greenville and lost 2-0 to Don Smart's Greenville triumph on the field right now for Lexington. This time it's Greenville going out west to Phoenix. Serrano opens up. Serrano. Jimenez. Crashing, Ombi was waiting for it. Jalen James has some help ahead. Holds on to it too long and lost it. Mogul call for the foul. Here comes that change. Flamini out, Murillo in. So Elijah Winder coming in for Louisville. That'll be it for Wilson Harris. They were begging for that ball to be played through to either 
Bainham or Machel. Wide open, right? And there's so much space. That's some of the things that you got to feel for the guys in this game is having not been on the field that long and then having to go through everything you have in this game. You chase for so long. Opportunities given up. You've slipped here and there. It's annoying with the pitch. Sometimes the easiest solutions are right in front of you and you can't get out of your own way. So you progress over midfield. Haven't seen that a lot in the second half. You got a five yard, 10 yard ball over your left shoulder that will spring the attack going forward. And instead, you're selfish, one foot in front of another. And to be honest, they got bailed out a little bit by Mogul on the tackle. Five to play now to find an equalizer for Lexington. Another foul. Sets up Lexington in good territory here to get a free kick in. These are the things you cannot afford to concede right now if you're Louisville. It almost seems like the only way back in this game for Lexington is a colossal mistake or a set piece, and you just gave them one of those here. On smart positions it. Free kick from out wide in a similar spot. We've got Louisville to go ahead goal. Back in the 69th minute, Del Piccolo found the big forehead of Sean Tosh. Yeah. 35 year old veteran Don Smart, his free kick into a good spot. The header is wide. Foul was called against Lexington. In the box, but that's a warning shot for Louisville. You cannot afford to concede those set pieces in that territory at this stage of the game. They've definitely got the height advantage from dead ball situations. And it was actually just in front of it, down underneath. That's Nico Brown. Little connection. Ricky Martinez in there as well. The interruption with Carlos Mogul stride. It's a clean look, though. Sam Stockley knows it as well. A little fun with the fourth official. He's been a ball of energy and good spirits any time that I've taken a look down at him in his technical area here, Sam Stockley. A free kick coming again here for Louisville. They have a vision in Lexington. It's one thing to have a vision, another thing to execute it the way you intend. That's what comes next. There are three games into that, two in league play, one in Open Cup. Barring them finding something late here, it'll be their only crack at Open Cup this year. Serrano, give and go with Mogul to the corner. tail end of this just like Ocean City Nor'easters just did 92nd minute of the game they just equalize Julius Labutis 2-2 against the Maryland Bobcats Only late game heroics left in this one Chattanooga 2-0 Des Moines Indy still down to Michigan Stars Tormenta still up in RGV Northern Colorado, an early goal against Colorado Springs. Last year, Northern Colorado, a hailstorm of USL League One upset. Colorado Springs switchbacks. And we have another one on the mind in a year that was fruitful for USL League One teams. Mentioned it earlier, mentioned it again. USL League One teams were 5-2 and two in the seven games against USL Championship teams in this second round. Louisville, one of the only two teams who got a win. And they're 90 seconds plus stoppage time away from doing that again. Beat Chattanooga last year. Chattanooga Red Wolves, that is, not Chattanooga FC of Nisa, who are on their way to a victory, it seems, over Des Moines. They had a nice run last year, upsetting Memphis, and then losing to Atlanta United.
So there will be three minutes tacked down to the end of this one. Only 180 seconds for Lexington to figure something out. They have one shot on target all match long. Expected goals, 0.23 for Lexington. But if you've watched any of this tournament in your life, you know that none of that matters and anything can happen. Robertson lays the ball all the way across for Owen Green. Pardon me, that's Caitlin Fox pitching up. Caitlin James saved by Zemla. Quick turn and hit. That's also a striker in Willem Batum who's just exhausted and he can't get enough energy. And a last gasp effort to the near post run. Well, he's right around the pedaling area. See, he's drifting right to the six, expecting the ball to be lofted back over. You can't call it laziness because he's had to do so much work up top. That ball is played in the opening five minutes of a game. You better believe that near post run would be available to him. Smart, almost acting as a center back right now, the quarterback of everything back there for Lexington. Zemlo away for some of the pressure. 2 0 torment up over RGV. They're headed to a second straight year and the win over a USL championship side, it appears. Still 1-1 one, an one extra time between Loudoun and North Carolina. Got to come on, got to move up higher in the box. Doesn't matter if you concede anymore. They're too deep, 90 seconds to go or just under. This is where you pop one in. Hit it with hope, a wink and a prayer. Martinez all the way out to Robertson. Tate Robertson cuts, plays one in. Tosh clears. Only as far as Fox, but his touch out of the way. Last minute. It's got to come now for Lexington. Otherwise, they'll have to hold their peace until another likely meeting next year again with this format of Open Cup. You might see this matchup again annually. And hold on here. Another free kick for Lexington. Credit to Jalen James for that little run. He had pinched back off, allowing the space to open back up. He was up on the elbow, and then the move by Fox to come forward. Loved the little one-two on the far touch line, involving the center back. And now here they come once again. The towers, and then some. I mean, there is just height all over the place right now, including Austin Causey, who's come up from his goal to get involved. Don Smart to the back post, the header, saved off the line! A photo finish here in the first ever Kentucky Derby. No goal line tech, no VAR, this call is this call, it was close. He thought that was it. Sam Stockley thought his boys finally had their equalizer. Bainham on the backside. All this is, is just pure grit. Six foot three, go up and try and get it. Ramsey Kwamazmi couldn't get jumped up. Neither could Jorge Gonzalez. Bainham certainly put the volume effort in. And then looking like it's too little and most certainly too late. In the first ever meeting between the new USL neighbors, it's Louisville City FC taking the victory and moving on to the third round of the 2023 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. The goal came in the 69th minute by Sean Tosh, and Louisville is on the brink perhaps of another run. They'll await the draw coming tomorrow at 6.30 Eastern to see who their next opponent is. And that does it for us today.
from Limp Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. The magic of the cup wasn't there for Lexington. They were close at the end, but no cigar here in the first ever Kentucky Derby. For the crew that makes this possible, and my broadcast partner, Devin Kerr, I'm Joe Malvasane. Good night from Limp Family Stadium. Louisville takes it 1-0 over Lexington.